So good, good morning. Um, this is uh, a video of the paintings that I produced up at Daisy Hill Forest. Uh, these paintings were done essentially over the last 12 months, uh, going to the one place, usually for about five to six weeks, sometimes a bit longer, and painting between about 8.30 in the morning and about one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and so these reflect the idea of the kind of mindfulness aspect of it and the aspect of tight observation. So this is one of the early paintings that I did. Um, uh, it's called Daisy Hill Forest, unsurprisingly, and I did this um, in June and July. Um, I did some ones at home, so I'll show you in a minute. So going around, this was the next work. Uh, it's called Morning Forest, Daisy Hill Conservation Park, and reflects a certain refinement. So if you, Looking in, zooming in, you'll see that there's a give way sign which uh, was, became a focus after you sit and stare at the forest. It's um, highly vegetated. Certain things become much more dominant. So it was really something of the kind of starting point for both the direction and the work itself. As the year progressed, so this is done in October, the forest became increasingly dry. So the uh, verdant kind of greens that one gets in the earlier works just doesn't exist anymore. The ground is absolutely bone crispy dry. And as these, pa and this painting is called Past Principle um, and um, reflects a kind of approach to um, the works that are there. So this is the next work, uh, it's called Fallen and it started as a focus point the tree that's um, the curvilinear tree is a branch that had fallen out of the trees because of the drought and so the focus became something about the kind of nature of the changing landscape and the forms that were there and all of these paintings were done uh, in the end plein air the outdoor french painting tradition um, this is a later painting called no exit and reflects something of the earlier considerations earlier on. So the idea of the kind of human made and the um, uh, nature uh, aspect, the kind of wild uh, aspect of it, are the kind of reflective points. But again, you can see the kind of color palette, a complete shift in terms of color palette. Um, this painting is called Sovereign and there's a tree uh, some distance away from where we normally paint and you can see the large tree in the foreground uh, the black bits are parts of the tree trunk that have been sort of exploded out as this massive old giant fell down and I've sat there and painted it for about six weeks um, in the crispy dry uh, really dry forest and I've been worried in a sense well worried is probably a poor word but i have been concerned that the scale of the tree wasn't really very apparent and I was down there one day and blow me down, a baby wallaby hopped right into that little window frame. So in here is a little wallaby and I quickly painted it in. And the good part is that um, Layla, one of the people that I also mentor on the Tuesday sessions, actually came, was late for class and came down to see me and actually witnessed the event. So I've got a living witness of this event. It wasn't a piece of fantasy. Okay, I'm gonna move around to some paintings which I did in my backyard, one moment. And this was one of the first that I did in my backyard. This um, actually is dated in, uh, let me have a look, I can't even see it myself, in May. Uh, and essentially what I was trying to celebrate was the bird box, so in the tree, is a king parrot box and that's essentially the title of the painting king parrot box uh, 419 springwood road which is where i live and it was kind of a celebration of a kind of um, attempt to uh, frame capture some of the things i mean i did a little pee because um, people cut down trees around our place all the time despite the fact there's koalas and things in them um, and so rather than becoming negative I went out and bought about a thousand bucks worth of uh, bird and possum boxes and then paid someone some money to climb up trees and to sling them into the tree. So this was the first of those paintings and you can see it was still reasonably green. Uh, this is, we also feed birds, so I built um, a special uh, feeding platform. We get quite a lot of uh, yellow-crested cockatoos, corellas, 
uh, bronze wings um, and others. So this is again the same tree, the large gum tree is a plant on. It's one of my favourite trees, I love it. It's a, spe a specific species which is um, pretty limited in terms of its distribution and we've got plenty of them in our garden. And the later one is more towards the end when we were having those horrible weeks where the sky was full of smoke and we've had massive dust storms in Brisbane. Most people don't notice them, but we live up high and you can see the pattern of the dust. So this is called dust storm and smoke uh, and is indicative of some of the work. My friend Ping Lee, who's been painting with me week by week, uh, has a more uh, expressive, um, bravura style of brush making, uh, brush marking, and um, um, a slightly more uh, look and put uh, kind of approach. So these are exemplars of her work. So the exhibition looks a bit like this in its collective. Then there's a group of works by Ping that are also part of the uh, Daisy Hill Forest experience. So Ping has been painting essentially not quite shoulder to shoulder, but within reasonable proximity of each other. And these are some works that Ping produced um, some time ago and exhibited at the Logan Art Gallery that focus on the bushscape. The rest of the exhibition is essentially made up of works which I've produced before. So I showed these works back in 2005. And these are part of my early look and put uh, style paintings. And when you see them next to Ping's, you can actually see uh, how our considerations, our creative considerations, our considerations of observation and other things uh, uh, pretty much overlap. So there's a kind of good kindred of spirit in terms of the work. So that's, that's the, the main gallery space. However, there is more space next door. It's a very generous, beautiful area to, to show work. Uh, and these are some of Ping's paintings. Ping does some independent painting down toward Redlands. And so these are uh, some of Ping's Redlands works. This is a work that also comes from that 2005 era. This is a 2.4 metre long painting. Again, all done of, all my paintings are about Daisy Hill and the Springwood Escarpment. And these are some works that Ping produced um, in her uh, home environment, that her place of birth, that is China, uh, and a reflective of um, Lotus uh, observation. And I think they're really beautiful suite of works. I really like them. These are subsequent, well, these are works which were also part of the 2005 exhibition that look at pattern, uh, namely bird flight and bird song in my own uh, backyard space. This one is more indicative of my observation near my place as a large, low, flat surface, which is in fact a water reservoir. Uh, and it gives a huge observational point out looking across the, uh, looking westward basically, southwest probably, um, and the, 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 uh, what was in fact once in ancient times um, a, a shallow swamp. Um, and so it's indicative of the kind of landscape view that you get from the hill and you can actually see again the kind of um, expressive kind of mark making. So they're kind of, uh, I'll try and stay still. You can see they're pretty richly painted. Uh, and where my new works, um, while they have mark making, they're not exactly based around that kind of bravura, you know, expressive mark making. And this is a group of works which I produced in about 2010, which I've never shown. And I thought probably warrant some exposure and these are based around Daisy Hill and again, my own living environment. And um, second last, but not least, is this large work, which is a signature piece that I produced in an exhibition that I had in 2005 called Ecology of Place. And is indicative of um, Craig Douglas, who was then mentoring me and the theory that in fact, when we look at uh, bushland, we think we're looking at something um, about nature, but in fact, what we're looking at is ruin. And at that stage, a fabulous Gold Coast developer was knocking over huge quantities of bush and selling off tiny blocks of land, which was subsequently called sanctuary. Very expensive homes there. 
Uh, so people obviously like being near the bush, but um, no one wants a tree in their backyard. All right, and last but not least is a painting by Ping that was part of the Lotus Suite that she produced. Uh, this is a really uh, uh, beautiful painting. And again, what's interesting is to look at the kind of tonal values that are in it and its relationship to some aspects of the Australian landscape. So as much as we think China is not Australia and Australia is not China, uh, anybody who actually has experiences of certain sorts of plant forms and other things will see as much as there's significant difference, there's also very significant similarity. So the exhibition brings together a group of works which are um, intended to be meditative. We've uh, organised the space somewhat so that people can sit and reflect. But the painting approach, um, certainly for me in recent times, has been about deep seeing, uh, not about the painting, but about um, just going through a series of processes of sitting, observing, the painting itself just resolves itself within its own terms. Um, and there's a kind of intimacy of experience, a careful observation, um, a careful kind of connection, and um, uh, a special kind of looking, I think. And I guess the central theme of this um, idea of this place is based around the idea of um, uh, a Buddhist axiom, which is the mind is a painter. Um, and it's used in Buddhist teaching. And what it points out is the common tendencies of the human mind to distort the primary senses of smell, sight, sound, taste and touch. And in Buddhism, the mind itself is classed as a, the sixth uh, sense. It's uh, treated as a sensory organ of its own kind. The essential underlying proposition is that the, the uh, mind itself is a misleading, provides false accounts, impression changes about existence, uh, and that mindfulness and meditation is something uh, aims to, in fact, eliminate the barriers of this kind. And a central thesis of this is that painting itself is a, is a practical kind of form, a practice of mindful concentration, deeps, and this idea of deep seeing is an anecdote, antidote to, to the construction of the inner eye of the mind. Uh, and essentially awakening is a pretty bold word, but um, awakening is something where you, there's some actualization, a realization. Um, it's not necessarily about sort of a spiritual connect. It's about actually um, understanding the process of seeing and looking and being in the moment, in this place. So that's the kind of central theme. So I hope you enjoyed the virtual exhibition and um, I'm a, it's a big shame I can't share this with you in the flesh but unfortunately the temple at the moment is locked down under uh, appropriate government legislation um, so stay safe stay well and hopefully this is provided with something that might be of interest to you when and if um, the gallery that is the temple is able to allow you in take care bye